everyone, my name's Annette and welcome back to Cotto Verdi. Today I'm sowing straw flowers. I absolutely love straw flowers. They're such colourful annuals and they're really easy to grow. They love the warm weather and if you plant them somewhere where they're going to get six to eight hours of sunshine, then they're just going to flower all season long, especially if you deadhead them. Straw flowers like a well-drained soil, but when you plant them out, do put a bit of compost in and then continue to feed them through the season. And from sowing, they're going to take between seven and 15 days to germinate. So about one or two weeks. Um, you do need to give them some heat. Um, so if you've got a heat mat, that would really help. Or just wait until your temperatures reach about 21 degrees, or I think that's 70 Fahrenheit. Once they've germinated, they're going to take between 75 and 85 days to reach maturity. In other words, until you get flowers. The Latin name or botanical name for straw flowers is Helichrysum, and I actually really like saying Helichrysum. I think it's a really pretty name and much prettier than straw flowers, but straw flowers um, actually really accurately describe what these flowers are. So they've got these really papery petals that make like a crinkly sound. If you brush your thumb or finger across them, they really are very like straw. Not only do the straw flowers or helichrysum look really good in your garden, but actually because of their texture, you can dry them really easily. Um, you just cut them and hang them upside down to dry and in about three weeks, they'll be dry, but the best thing about them is that they really keep their color so well. If you are going to dry your flowers, I would just say that um, you need to pick your um, the, you need to pick the flowers when they're at the right stage. So don't pick them when they're fully open because they're going to continue to open as you dry them. So you need to pick them when only one or two of the bracts have opened and the bracts are essentially the petals. They're, they're the colorful bit at the top but don't pick them when they're fully open and you can see the pollen inside if you want to dry them. The other thing to note about the helichrysum is that um, once they are mature and fully open and looking beautiful in your garden, um, what will happen is that they'll close up at night or when it rains and so they'll look as if um, they haven't opened yet, <laughs> they'll disguise themselves and then you might pick them thinking if you go out at night or in the dusk, you'll pick them thinking that they're not fully mature and then actually they would be fully mature. So try to pick them, you know, when it's bright outside and the, and the blooms have opened for the day. I'm going to sow the helichrysum today just by sprinkling them on top of the compost. Um, and then I'm going to make sure the compost is moist and cover them with a dome. You don't want to cover the seeds because they really need light to germinate and they are going to germinate pretty quickly if it's warm enough. And I'm not going to use any vermiculite because they're going to germinate so quickly. I just don't think I'm going to need it for these particular seeds. Once your seeds have germinated and they've started growing, it's not necessary to pinch them. Straw flowers don't need it, um, but do pot them on as and when necessary to give them fresh compost and um, until you can get them out in the garden after your last frosts. So what I'm going to do is go through the different varieties that I'm sowing today and I've got 10 different varieties and then I'll just show you how I'm sowing them. If you want to skip ahead to the bit where I'm sowing them, I will put, I will put a timestamp up on the screen for you. All the varieties that I'm sowing today are going to get to a, about 90 centimeters tall. I think that's about three foot. Um, so I just won't keep repeating myself, but that's the general height of most straw flowers. The first one I'm saying today is Bright Rose. And this is a lovely carmine rose color with a silvery tint. The next one I'm sowing is Silvery Rose. And this is a lovely shimmery, silvery pink color. I'm also sowing King Size Raspberry Rose. And these are bigger blooms. I think they're up to about two inches across. And this is a lovely creamy, corally raspberry color. And then I'm sewing purple. And this is cerise pink with like a hint of mauve. And then I'm sewing purple red. This is a really dramatic, dark purple color. And then I'm sewing copper red. And this is a lovely, lustrous, bright, coppery, orange red color. And then I'm sewing orange. And this is a lovely burnished dark orange with a metallic luster. Then I'm sewing king sized orange. And this is like a really fiery orange with hints of red and gold. It's gorgeous. And again, this is going to be one of the larger blooms. And then I'm sewing golden yellow. 
And this is a really rich, sunshiny, dark, golden yellow colour. And then I'm sewing white, which is just a pure white, which will be a lovely contrast against its foliage, but also is just going to be like the perfect sort of sparkle of white in my garden and in flower arrangements. It'll be really super useful and I'm hoping to dry some of that so that I can use it um, during the festive season. I think it'll look really good with all the reds and greens. So today I'm using exactly the same compost that I always use to sow my seeds, which is the Melcourt Silver Grow Peat Free Compost. And I really like it. I've never had any problems with it at all. This is not an ad. It's just that if you're looking for a good peat-free compost to sow your seeds in, then I would recommend this one. And I'll put a link in the description below if you want to see which one it is that I'm talking about. So don't forget to label your seed trays. I mean, I probably don't need to say that, but look how cute straw flower seeds are. They look like chocolate sprinkles. They're so cute. So I am sowing more than one um, seed per cell on some of these varieties because some of my seed is from last year and I just want to make sure I get good germination. Um, if it's fresh seed, then you probably only need to put one seed in each one, um, and they germinate really quickly, so you can always fill a gap if you see that one of your cells hasn't germinated. I've sown all my straw flowers, or helichrysum, which is my favourite word. Um, they're also called everlasting flowers, obviously because they dry so well. Um, so that they're all exactly the same flowers. Um, I hope it's inspired you to try your hand at sewing them. It's really easy. So do give them a go. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and following along. And if you have, please do give it a like because it really helps my channel and I would really appreciate it. And if you want to see how my straw flowers do in the summer, then hit the subscribe button and I will definitely be filming an update to show you how they're looking and you can have a look at that. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you all next time. Mm -hmm.